Hey guys, what's up? This is Bridget, Will's mom, and I just wanted to make a video because um some people have been asking me, like, what did William exactly have and why did he pass away? <clears throat> so, I think it's important for me to make the video. I think Will would want me to, um, just so we can spread awareness of what William had and why it is also important to even though children are young to respect their wishes and just work together as a family and work towards you know the best plan of care for any individual that is in your care or in your family um dealing with a terminal illness or dealing with a serious chronic illness so william had um two genetic disorders. The first one is XLP2, and it is a primary immunodeficiency disorder. It causes your immune system to completely be dysfunctional on many levels. It causes a lot of other problems as well. Um, you can't fight viruses, bacteria. Um, it doesn't help with like wound healing. So if you get a, a wound, um, it will not heal properly and it can cause other problems as well. Like an enlarged spleen, inflammation, the eyes, the brain, the colon. Um, it just is, it just, it just causes a lot of problems for anybody that unfortunately is born with that genetic disorder. Um, it's very rare. It only occurs in one in every five million boys. And it is something that more doctors sh should be researching because even though it's rare, um, they don't really know how rare it is. They know it's like one in every five million, but there could be people walking around that have it, that it, it goes undiagnosed or diagnosed as something else. And then it's not being properly treated. So I think it's important just to spread awareness of it. Um, William also had NOD2, which is a predisposition for Crohn's disease. And he did develop Crohn's disease at a very, very young age. Um, he was a little bit older than six years old when he was diagnosed. Um, and he had severe early onset Crohn's um, of the ileal sequel valve. It's where your large intestines and your small intestines meet and there's like a little valve there um that was his primary location and then he had several he had several other spots that were also affected by his Crohn's and Crohn's also causes its own host of problems you can develop joint problems skin problems you know William had problems with inflammation of his eyes like he dealt with a lot of things that nobody should ever have to deal with um, and he was an extremely strong person and he just lived, you know, he lived his life like the way he wanted to. Um, he didn't let his diseases stop him from pursuing his dreams or even having dreams. A lot of people, you know, if they're very sick, sometimes they give up. Sometimes they don't want to do anything anymore. And William did the complete opposite. He was like, no, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do this, A, B, C, D, E. And he just would go down a list of things that he would want to accomplish and he would do them. Like he, he was the strongest person I've ever had the privilege of even knowing in my own life. And I feel even more blessed that he was my child. So <clears throat> besides that, um, William spent a lot of time in the hospital, years, and um, it was just a constant struggle for him. He was always going in and out of the hospital. He basically lived there. And the last m months of his life, he lived in the ICU in Shands. And we were always really thankful for Shans because a lot of other hospitals didn't even want to attempt a bone marrow transplant on William because the condition that he was in was so poor that 
they just felt that it was um, hopeless and they didn't, they didn't even want to try. But Shans had a wonderful bone marrow transplant doctor named Dr. Horn and she wanted to help William get better and William wanted to try a bone marrow transplant to try to get better even though it only had a 30% chance of survival. He wanted to still try it because without it, it was a 0% chance of survival and Will was a fighter. So that's what he did. He fought. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, William's bone marrow transplant rejected. He had, like, this week where he had, like, a really high fever for, like, a week straight. And then all his counts dropped to zero. And he had a complete rejection, which is really rare because that only happens in, like, less than 1% of people. But his, his disease was so... <laughs> sorry his disease was so aggressive that it just wouldn't even let like let his body accept bone marrow so they told him that they could attempt a second one using his sister as a donor but William didn't want to attempt to do that um because it was a less than 10 percent chance of working and then on top of it, he would have had to do chemo again. Um, and he did not want to do chemo again. And he didn't want to, he told us he didn't want to pursue any more treatments. He wanted just to be a kid and have fun and hang out with his friends with the time he had left and hang out with us and see his dog and have a party. And we respected his wishes. <laughs> it's really, really important to respect um, people's wishes, even if they are children. Children who are really sick, a lot of times you would be surprised. They actually are more aware of what a lot of parents think they are. And William, William knew that it was going to be time for him to leave. And <laughs> I'm so sorry. And he he really wanted to just make the most of his time. Um, some parents, they'll just keep going and going. And they'll do aggressive treatments even though they know their child is terminal. Um, but we felt that that was not in William's best interest. Because it's not something that William wanted. William wanted just to be a kid, and we just really wanted to respect what he wanted. He had been through so much, it, it felt wrong to try to convince him to do more things that would potentially just waste the time he had left. So that's what we did, and we we did what we felt was best for our son. But... um. We just really wanted to spread awareness of what XLP2 was and NOD2 because they are things that people, you know, they're genetic disorders that really do affect people's lives. And there are other children like William that are going through things like that and they shouldn't have to. There should be more treatments. There should be more research. There should be more funding. And maybe one day there will be a time when kids with XLP2 don't pass away and don't have to have risky bone marrow transplants to try to live past adolescence. It shouldn't ever have to end the way it did for Will. It shouldn't have to end that way for any kid. Their parents are not supposed to bury or you know, parents are not supposed to go after their children. My son was supposed to have a long life. He was supposed to do the things that he wanted to do. And with more research and understanding, one day that could be possible. 
and that's all we can hope for. So, thank you for watching, and thank you for being such great friends to Will. I know that he loved each and every one of you, and he appreciated everything that you guys said to him and did for him. Good night.